Hello, everyone. This is Paul Rodden, and I want to welcome you back to the Hydrogen Podcast. Today, we're going to talk with Parker Meeks, CEO of Hyzon, on a major development that will revolutionize the waste management industry of the United States. Hyzon designs and manufactures fuel cell technology for heavy-duty transport applications and integrates this technology into zero-emissions hydrogen-powered commercial vehicles. Their low-cost, clean hydrogen infrastructure approach synchronizes supply with demand, putting clean trucks on the road faster. I'm extremely excited to share this news and can't wait to learn more about their new offering. Now let's cue up the theme song and dive right into the interview. So the big questions in the energy industry today are, how is hydrogen the primary driving force behind the evolution of energy? Where is capital being deployed for hydrogen projects globally? And where are the best investment opportunities for early adopters who recognize the importance of hydrogen? I will address the critical issues and give you the information you need to deploy capital. Those are the questions that will unlock the potential of hydrogen, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Paul Rodden, and welcome to the Hydrogen Podcast. Okay, welcome back. I have a special guest for the show today, and what he is going to talk about is a game changer for the waste management industry. I'm delighted to introduce Parker Meeks. Parker Meeks is the CEO of Hyzon and is a visionary leader in the hydrogen fuel cell industry. And under his exceptional leadership, Hyzon has achieved significant milestones, including the development and unveiling of North America's first hydrogen fuel cell refuse truck in collaboration with New Way. Parker's strategic vision and commitment to sustainability have propelled Hyzon to the forefront of zero emission power solutions for heavy duty commercial vehicles. Welcome, Parker. Thank you for joining us again on the Hydrogen Podcast. It's great to have you on the show. Hey, Paul. Thanks so much for having me back. Great to see you and excited to update on the progress we're making and how we're going to make garbage a really exciting world. I can't wait to hear more about it. So Hyzon announced major news recently. To start off, can you walk us through the announcement of the delivery of North America's first hydrogen fuel cell refuse truck? What were some of the key challenges and milestones that you encountered that led you to this moment? No, thanks, Paul. And we're, we're, we're really thrilled to share where we are with the refuse market because it's one that we really do believe is one that, that, that fuel cell can only deliver the performance that fleets need to match what combustion can do in a zero emission way. And we're excited as Hyzon to be you know, the first in Australia first and then now the first in North America to bring a fuel cell refuse production vehicle to market. And I do need to start with our friends down under. First, so yeah. our Australia team brought this truck to life. Basically, the way that we developed our platforms globally, you know, each region is focused on a platform that's best suited for some reason to start in that region. So the U.S. Uh, team started with the conventional nose Class 8 truck. The European team started with the the cab over flat front heavy duty truck. And our Australia team started with what we call the heavy rigid, which is the base vehicle for a farmer's truck. And that heavy rigid, by the way, that base fuel cell power chassis. There's a, a refuse body on the back of that right now, right? But that same fuel cell power chassis could have a, a, a varied array of back ends on it to serve other markets in the future. So we're starting with refuse, and that's because there was a very strong pull from our Australian refuse fleet base to have a fuel cell refuse truck. So our Australian team developed that truck, deployed it in trial in October 2023 with Romandis. Romandis is the fifth largest refuse fleet in the world. They have a significant presence in Europe and in Australia. They're a great customer to put this platform to the test, and they did. Unconstrained combustion routes, 18% grades. Those that don't know what 18% is, go look at you know the steepest hill in your, in your neighborhood, and it's probably less than 10%. This was a real use case, and one where to, to do the work of combustion, we needed to do 1,200 trash can lifts, right? These aren't your bathroom trash cans. These are full trash cans by the street, and go about 150 miles to do full, full, full commercial work. Our truck did that consistently without having to refuel, right? And that's important because the best battery trucks that, that, that our customers in that region have tried for some time do about half that work, 600 part wow. lifts, and then they have to go home and charge. So why is that? That is because of weight mainly, so payload. So a typical garbage truck hauls about 13 tons of, of trash, right? Um, our truck has very minimal weight penalty. So it can haul about the same. A battery truck can have an up to a four ton weight penalty, up to 40% of the payload you can't haul because of battery weight. And that causes more trips to the landfill for the same amount of, of trash. So, you know, with that, our customers see 
And that proved to us that in, in this Australian use case, significantly challenged hilly use case, four months, no failures, no unplanned downtime, the same operating cost as diesel without subsidy, wow. which is an amazing statement because the fuel down there is reasonable. It was about nine US dollars a kilo, which still isn't what we want, but good enough. And uh, and, and and doing all that work. So one of the strengths of Hyzon is a centrally designed fuel cell powertrain and fuel cell supply globally deployed, right? So with that, in parallel, our U.S. team, working with our Australian team, brought that truck to life for the U.S. market. So our, we, we collaborated globally to build the first U.S. truck. That truck, we found New Way as a great partner to, to, to launch that first truck with. You know, New Way is the largest private refuse body OEM in the U.S. market. They're someone who wants to lean forward and innovate. And so ma- the main challenges we had to work through first was the Australian experience in total, which has gone quite well, and then translating that from a a right-hand drive to a left-hand drive configuration, and then working with a new bodybuilder. But the good news for us is once we've powered a chassis, working with a different OEM is relatively straightforward. It's really just software collaboration with that OEM, and we're able to do that quite successfully in a great partnership from a February announcement to a May unveil. It's a pretty short period of time, and to trials now kicking off this summer with some of the largest fleets in the U.S., you know, we are thrilled in, in sort of how that program has, has gone. That's awesome. And so speaking of New Way, how did that partnership come about? And what were some of the key synergies between Hyzon and New Way for that project? There are a few critical overarching alignment points that had to come together, right? And I think the first really is a vision that zero emission solutions are needed and there are customers out there who really want this. New Way helped us really understand the U.S. refuse market from their customers. You know, they all the large fleets are their customers, right? And they understand exactly where the market's going. So that helps us align on the most critical pieces of what's the business case, what's the business model, what application makes the most sense. That led us to the automated side loader, the ASL, as the body type for this first truck. That's the highest growth uh, segment of the refuse truck market. But a lot of the, the refuse fleets see the efficiencies that, that the ASL can provide, driving down the street, picking up trash with that arm, right? So that helped us to align and what body made sense what market made the most sense? What fleets should we pre-develop? And we actually did that together. So we actually had a private event for a number of customers. New Way brought them to our facility to see the trucking process, to understand where we were going, to understand the Australian experience and the operating metrics, and to further convince us of what exact configuration, what exact use case, what customer interest did we see, which frankly blew us away and, and really exceeded our expectations and really primed us to configure that truck in a way that would maximize its benefit to the U.S. market and would give us a really strong running start with the customer base. That's that's really what you see in our announcements where we have, you know, nine major refuse fleets that are lined up to trial the truck starting in a, a matter of weeks and that those fleets encompass the majority of the largest fleets in North America. What specific features of the Hyzon 200 kilowatt fuel cell system make it more efficient and more cost effective compared to your competitors? Yeah, I mean, look, generally, if, let's take two examples, refuse truck first and then, and then the class eight, because by the way, the refuse collection vehicle, the garbage truck we all know and love, that's what we've been talking about. Mm-hmm. Refuse companies need the class eight as well. They haul 82,000 pounds of trash from station to station. And I'll just say battery trucks can't do that very well either, but we will come back to that. So <laughs> in, a, in a class eight truck, a single 200 kilowatt fuel cell system has all of the weight and volume and cost efficiencies that we, that we talked about before, right? Versus the yeah. traditional approach of having to use two 120 kilowatt or so systems to provide the power that a, a, a truck needs, right? So that lower weight, that ability to package the whole thing where the engine goes. Our 200 kilowatt fits nicely where the engine's supposed to go. That's important because fuel cells in the end are sensitive pieces of equipment. So you don't want to hang them off the side of the truck. And some people are having to put one of them inside of the truck or behind the cab. Mm-hmm. It's not good for durability, right? So those are some of the key advantages in a, in a class eight. In the refuse truck, actually, our current refuse trucks use the 110 kilowatt, which is enough power and fuel efficiency to, to obviously do the work because the trucks are doing the work and they're doing it at the same operating cost as combustion when fuel is below $10 a kilo. However, we believe the 200 kilowatt will, will an even faster path to total cost of ownership pairing. And the reason is with a 110 kilowatt, while it can do the work, 
fuel cells love to be at 60% utilization, right? That's where fuel efficiency maximizes. And that's where we think over time, a fuel cell powertrain can be up to 50% more fuel efficient than a diesel powertrain hmm. because of the efficiencies that we think we can glean if that fuel cell is able to run at 60% consistently, right? So at 110 kilowatts, it is running higher than that more often than we would like, which does drive fuel efficiency lower, although it's still good enough to meet diesel from a cost perspective. How with 200 kilowatts, we think that fuel efficiency gain will be tremendous. So it is a bit yeah. more expensive for us, obviously, to put a 200 kilowatt fuel cell into a refuse truck. We think in the end, that's going to be a massive improvement even beyond what we have today in range, in performance, and in total cost of ownership, giving us a faster path to TCO parity without subsidy. Can you elaborate on the pilot programs planned in California with Recology? Uh, what metrics will be used to assess the success of those programs? Great question. That's what we're engaged deeply with Recology and the rest of our customer base on. It's, it's, it's quite simple, right? These customers want to be able to put any truck on the road, have it do the work safely and with high performance and uptime and, and at the lowest cost possible. Right. So the metrics we will be measuring, first of all, they're going to be put on unconstrained combustion units. So they're going to be doing all the work combustion does, and they need to do the work without refueling. Right. So your typical refuse route in the U.S. depending on density is anywhere from 1,000 to 1,800 can lifts. So that 1,200 to 1,400 can lift per day, that 150 mile range, the average use case that we need to be able to deliver against. And we're hopeful to see how far that that can go. You know, can we in certain instances? go to 1,500, 1,700 lifts, right? Additionally, the fueling time, right? We anticipate that truck should fuel in as low as 10 minutes. It's actually only 26 kilos of fuel on board. It's half half the fuel on board that truck. It still delivers the range that we need to do combustion routes. So can we get to a 10 minute, 15 minute refueling time consistently? And then, you know, what is the overall operating cost of that unit? Assuming fuel is at at a certain, certain price point, are we seeing the fuel efficiencies are we seeing the operating cost like we did in Australia, where we're already meeting diesel, assuming fuel is less than 10 a kilo? And then the final piece is what is the uptime, right? Mm-hmm. The truck's got to run. Do we have failures? We did not We did not in Australia, which is tremendous. And frankly, a result that we didn't expect is almost all new technology, first of its kind, fleet deployments has some kind of an issue. So yeah. having ha- having downtime won't be the end of the world if it does happen. It happens in technology like ours from time to time. But if it does happen, what's the cause? Do we understand it? How long is it down? And how much confidence do we have at the end of the trial that this is going to work? And and again, based in Australia, we, we have very high confidence. We're just excited to get it out there, put it on U.S. roads and in the Bay Area first and to move it on to SoCal from there. And speaking of Australia, how does Hyzon's experience with hydrogen fuel cell implementation in Australia inform your strategies and expectations for the North American waste management market? I think it really sets the foundation for what the truck can do, gives us the confidence and the learnings on how we deploy it as well. So with Ramondas, and we're so thankful to them to be the first customer globally to trial that vehicle and put it through its paces for such a long time, we learned a lot of things, not just about how to run the truck in fully unconstrained routes, but also how we help our customers train, how we help our service providers train as well, how we work mm-hmm. with local authorities to make sure that they're trained up on you know, if something happens, how do they need to respond to make sure that they can stabilize that uh, truck? And finally, how we think about setting up the after sales program and, and the entire ecosystem around it, which, of course, we have learnings from the class eight side as well across all those fronts. But it just helps to have that unique experience in the refuse use case that we can certainly build upon. Because while the, the pickup is on the other side of the truck, most of the rest of the operation is pretty uh, simple. What feedback have you received from waste management companies and municipalities about the hydrogen fuel cell refuse truck? I, I can only imagine it's overwhelmingly positive. It is. I mean, there's a there's a huge buzz and excitement that we have to deliver on, which we're, we're quite excited to do. But when they see the results from Australia, when they see the truck now on the ground, right, when they understand the specs, the performance that we expect, when they see how long the technology has been in development for high zone period, and in the on-road use case of, of the Class 8, they know that we're not coming to this without having done mobility, high vibration use cases in our technology, without having experience to see why we think it will succeed. At the Unveil in Waste Expo, I'm proud that our, our partner New Ways booth that we had the truck in was, we think, the busiest, uh, but that's a biased view. At the show, we had tens of customers come to us talking about their interest in the truck. Our, our trial schedule is full. We're now having to try and say, can we shorten 
certain trials for certain customers to try to squeeze in, squeeze in some more. And, and frankly, how fast can we get a second trial truck to market given all the demand? Speaking of waste management companies and municipalities, what is your vision of how this ecosystem could develop? Is this a scenario where they would contact you for the trucks and then one of your partner companies like Raven SR to produce the hydrogen on site using their waste to hydrogen tech? What's, what is your blueprint to successfully scale that for those clients? I think you're onto it. I, this is all about the first truly circular ecosystem, mm-hmm. right? Where we're going fully from what they call well to wheel or well to tailpipe, all in one location, potentially, right? So the way that we see this working, first of all, let's start with where you started, the end mm-hmm. customer, which in many cases, yes, the fleet buying the truck is one of the, the big fleet operators, right? But the, their customers in the end, are typically many times cities and municipalities that actually own the landfill who are contracting out refuse collection services, right? And and what's happening in California, many of these cities and counties are actually putting into their RP processes requirements for zero emission vehicles as part of the fleet in the award decision. That's what's driving this significantly increased interest in zero emission trucks. It's what's driving the disappointment in the battery trucks who have been failing to deliver both on the refuse side and the the class state heavy haul side. That's what's driven a lot of these fleets, despite the fact that things like the advanced clean fleet rule is being delayed and that, you know, some other re- regulations may not be going as fast. There's real commercial reasons now for them to be able to compete given the uh, requirements that, that, that the cities and counties are putting in in that place. So the way we see it happening is exactly that. We're, we're now actively in planning with our fleets about the trucks and fuel, right? On the back of trials, as I've said many times, the goal is that the trial run is the last proof point, have commercial contracts in place on the back of a trial, assuming success with a multi-year scale-up agreement. And we have to in parallel help them by bringing in our, our fueling partners to talk about fueling. So in the near term, it's going to be just like our class eights. It'll be mobile fuelers dispensing mm-hmm. fuel on site when we make the first five to 10 truck d- delivery. And then the second, you know, 10 to 30 truck delivery. The so mobile fueler in this kind of use case could probably fuel up to 40 trucks at a single location before you need to go to a more permanent dispensing solution. And in parallel, these companies are actively looking at, in many cases, you know, how do we produce hydrogen from landfill gas or from solid waste, all of which typically is a negative carbon zero or negative carbon intensity when you account for the methane would otherwise be released. And frankly, many cities and counties see it as an opportunity for them to monetize their landfill and for their ability to, in some cases, create more room for more trash, which is a problem. Are there incentive programs being developed or offered to encourage waste management companies to adopt these new hydrogen fuel cell refuse trucks? There are actually, and, and many of it dovetails with what's already in place, for instance, in California under the car HVIP program and some of the other disadvantaged community programs that provide additional incentive beyond the HVIP vouchers. But just to recap for those that aren't as aware listening in, you know, California through the, 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 the California Air Resources Board managed HVIP program provides vouchers for heavy duty fuel cell trucks that are uh, $240,000 per truck as a base voucher amount today. There's $300 million available in that fund today for Class A trucks. And that is amazing. And we're accessing that actively for our Class A tractor program, like for the trucks we delivered to, P- to Poland's Food Group and to Drayage over the last six to seven months. And those also will apply and be available to garbage trucks. You can stack on top of that additional set of money. There's a, a bonus program that can add up to, I believe it's $30,000 for a garbage truck specifically. And then there's additional money available if you're in a disadvantaged community, if your truck is operating in a disadvantaged community, and or if you're a certain fleet size. When you stack up all the available incentive, you could, could get up to $500,000 per truck for a garbage truck. So for those fleets, what that means is if a, a diesel garbage truck today costs between $300,000 and $350,000, right, on diesel, we could charge up to $850,000 for a fuel cell truck and they'd be paying the same price as these net, net, net. That provides yeah. a lot of room for us to have a product that we can build, that customers can afford, and that we can still hopefully generate positive cash back to the company like we're doing today on the large fleet in the class A teams. How does this new refuse truck fit into your long-term goals for Hyzon in the heavy duty commercial vehicle sector? Yeah, so I mean, look, it's the refuse truck and also the overall refuse refuse customer base, which we believe is a huge opportunity for both the, the refuse truck and the class A. And the way we see it, 
at Heisler, we're very focused on a very relatively low cash and capital need approach to scaling the technology, which is back to base use case to minimize the number of dispensing points that we need to fuel the trucks. And it is paired with a single platform global 20 kilowatt powertrain focus, right? So the garbage truck that we are moving forward with is the one garbage truck that we're going to build globally with a different right-hand side, left-hand side driving configuration, depending on where uh, you are. You know, we believe that truck, even if that's the only garbage truck we do, can scale into the hundreds just based on the, the market demand and the outperformance we see in fuel cell over battery in refuse trucks. Similarly, in refuse, the Class 8 tractor for heavy haul. I mentioned before, that is something that we've seen open up tremendously with equal, if not higher, demand from refuse fleets because they do have this significant use case of having to move 82,000 pounds of trash from landfill to transfer station. It's a very heavy haul. If you're doing that in most of California, there are hills, right? And so right. many of these fleets have been trying battery class eight trucks for some time. One of our fleet customers in our trial schedule has told us they've tried a number of different class eight battery trucks for major OEMs. None of them have been able to do their 200, 225 mile day. Yeah. So I'll say that again. These battery trucks can't do a 200 mile route, right? Because it's heavy and because there are hills, right? So what they're seeing is even for class eight in refuse is that because of the heavy loads, they need fuel cell to do that job. And we're excited that, you know, most of these refuse fleets are trialing both. They're both trialing the, the collection vehicle and they're trialing the class eight trial. So refuse is a segment because it has this back to base nature, because these fleets are used to fueling with compressed gases, given most of their trucks today mm-hmm. are compressed natural gas in many cases. They're used to right. capturing fuel on site. This is actually, in many ways, the easiest use case for us to scale into because the fuel can be made on site. The customer is used to fuel infrastructure on site. They all return to the same base. There's high concentrations of trucks in a single location. And frankly, mm-hmm. fuel cell is the only powertrain that can do a zero emission job. I agree. <laughs> are there any future innovations or upcoming projects Hyzon is working on that build on the success of this hydrogen fuel cell refuse truck? Anything you'd like to tease us with? Yeah, I think I kind of, I kind of started to hint at it earlier, but you know, with this hydrogen powered chassis, right, the base vehicle that the, the refuse body goes on top of, that chassis can be the base vehicle for a number of different uses, right? So think about cement mixers, think about even box delivery trucks, you know, think about boom trucks and lift trucks. Like that's the vocational truck space, right? So right. what we're excited about is there's a number of OEMs who that's their business is to provide a diverse array of vocational vehicles to power and gas utilities, to water utilities, to departments of transportation, right? These are largely publicly funded entities. But if you're in California and you're a publicly funded entity, you need to start decarbonizing your fleet by mandate as soon as the advanced fleet fleet rule is being enforced. And, and many of those public fleets are engaging around where are my solutions for my impending decarbonization need because again anywhere you have a truck that spends a lot of its energy sitting still like a garbage truck packing packing that trash or like a cement mixer mixing that cement sitting still Mm -hmm. or like a a power utility truck who may be sitting still doing a boom or a lift or something else with a, a power takeoff you know most of the vocational world spends 40 percent of its fuel sitting still so all of that we believe is going to be very hard for battery because of how much battery weight you have to add in that truck and those are all, all those are opportunities that many of which our current base vehicle could deliver against just with a different back end that's awesome I, i'm excited to hear that this has been an incredible conversation and i'm so excited about this new partnership offering between Hyzon and new way Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. Paul, it's always a pleasure to come on. I just want to say, you know, I'm quite excited about where we are and where we're going and appreciate the engagement with you and with all, all of your audience. Check us out on our website, HyzonFuelCell.com. And if you're at the ACT Expo coming up or the other conferences coming up soon, I hope you we're able to engage with you and to shape this future decarbonized world to use the technology very, very soon. Thanks so much Absolutely. for having me. We'll be right there with you. Absolutely. All right, everyone, I want to thank Parker again for joining with me today to discuss his views on the hydrogen industry. Again, like Parker said, you can check out their website at highsonfuelcell.com to see everything that they have going on. Thanks again. Have a great day. Take care. Hey, this is Paul. I hope you liked this podcast. If you did and want to hear more, 
I'd appreciate it if you would either subscribe to this channel on YouTube or connect with your favorite platform through my website at www.thehydrogenpodcast.com. Thanks for listening. I very much appreciate it. Have a great day.